the rituals that we go through just to sit down and have a conversation. I would love to just put a camera here sometime just, just to see what the body's action and reactions are before stepping into a thought. And then I step back away from that going, why would you bring judgment against yourself? And we do that a lot. We'll sit there and we'll take those little selfies and stuff like that. And subliminally, we're, we're just telling ourselves, you just don't look right. No, I don't like the way your hair is. And, and so and the inner core of your body is, is going, OK, I'll try better tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We are four days deep into this new season of spring. The sights and sounds of Mother Nature are a gift to all who have decided to receive. And you know what's really interesting is that each of us, we we are unique in the way that we accept what spring is as it is happening to us. Some stories may have a likeness, but it's how we process it that generates the reaction. The mind, it settles into the birth of a brand new sunrise. To be present inspires the human soul to believe in its own changes. To help accept what is versus what won't become learning to listen to all that's natural including morning walks through a forest to be part of the atmosphere in the way of silently watching the early arrivers you know the fluttering tiny birds the scampering rabbits the deer that just stand there like statues and inside their mind they're saying if i don't move the human will not see me (laughs) four days into spring peacefully we grow in harmony. Hey, it's Arrow. This is The Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer watching the leaves pop in this forest and the red bud trees with their purple flowers. And oh my God, it's just amazing. The dogwoods are preparing for their spring flowers as well. Everything is just growing and you can't help but say, as am I, as am I. This is The Daily Mess. You're, you're familiar with TED Talks, master classes, and so many other methods of education. Well, they are to inspire the human heart to believe in the spirit of location. Have you heard that one before? They are to inspire the human heart to believe in the spirit of location. L- let me break this down. When I entered the martial arts world in 2002, I was no different than most people. It was all about the kicking, the hitting, the punching, right? Right. It's more about locating the spirit of discovery and arrival and less of the physical expectation. You see, as students, we were told that you can only master one thing, one thing only. Well, the eye of the ego took on the challenge wanting to do two or three different things. I'll master these three things. Well, what it does is it creates confusion in the way of clouding up the process of personal location to master the punch requires a completely different path of practices. I mean, you might be good at something, but have you truly mastered the skills? Inspiring the heart to believe in the spirit of location. So I ask, where are you? What what have you been called to? Because my mantra has always been, share your story or someone will write it for you. And in this modern age, people are always rewriting your story. Sometimes it's very difficult for us to say, no, no, stop, stop. That's not how it went. I, I was there because it's my story. I, I realize you're, you're sharing it this way, but that's not how it went. And we have to tell ourselves that too, because as a daily writer, my truth and, and my form is on this page. And, and I'm not going to go here to pin out the potential of there being something else that actually took place. That's, that, that's not going to happen. And so when you are truthful and transparent with yourself on the page, then it grows on the outside of your heart. What is the story? Or someone is going to write it for you. And that someone could be a new personality that you pick up along the way in a couple of hours from now. It's going to say, well, this is the way that, that I, I saw it happen when in reality it wasn't. And, and, and so and that's how things get a little bent out of place. And we do go on to Facebook and Instagram, Twitch and all those other ones to, to sit there and, and paste our thoughts onto other people's eyes. And then people start writing your story. I am so guilty of that. I will have what I think is a, a, a thought that could move people, to inspire people, to, to allow people to grow in their own shoes. And it comes back the opposite direction in the way of going, wow, dude, that, that was, that's pretty offensive. And you're going, 
it was meant to inspire. It was meant it was meant to bring things to you. See, what they do is as they receive it, it goes all the way back to what we first started talking about. Four days deep into the spring, the sights and sounds of Mother Nature are a gift to all who receive. Each of us are unique in the way of how we accept what is. Some stories may have a likeness, but it's how we process it that generates the reaction. The same is true about the words that you speak and or share through social media. Somebody is going to write your story for you because they based their story on your story and how they reacted to your story on something that you put out there, but they don't know your story. And that's why we've got to have that courage and the confidence to say, no, 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 no. That's not how it went. And I think I, I need to do that on Facebook sometimes when, when I put something up there that somebody has been offended by, when in reality it's just a gut check. I need to say, here's the reason why I'm saying this. But you know how it is. Twitter's onto something when they you know give you, what, 160, 180 characters? The human eye can only take so much. How much of a newspaper story do you actually read? Just the headlines? And then, well, okay, here's, here's what's going on in the world. You based it on a headline? I'm Errol. And that's The Daily Mess.